God. God will always encourage us, uplift us. Hallelujah. That is the awesomeness of God. Because God wants us to live. He wants us to have a relationship with Him because God is not a dead God. He is a God that is alive. He lives. And, 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 and He lives within us. Satan is still a liar. He's a liar. He's the father of lies because he is trickery. He's so tricky to he tricked Adam and Eve into eating all that forbidden fruit so that they would die. But even after they ate off the forbidden fruit, God still had a love for his people. For his people so much until he desired that man would turn from his sinful ways, whereas he transgressed the law of God and that would honor him and walk in his holy way. Then we find that if we are saved, we're not subject to the control and the power of Satan. But we should be under the control and the power of God. But if you are not saved, I want you to know that you are under the control of the devil. Every individual that's not saved have at least one demon. Have at least one demon. Simply because the devil dwell in those that whereas Christ does not dwell. If God is not there, the devil is there. God cannot dwell in an unclean temple. But he dwell in a vessel that is fit for him. Yeah. Satan cannot dwell in the temple where God dwells. He can have an influence upon us, but he cannot dwell in it. Simply because how can two walk together except they agree? But yet we find ourselves so many times we are subject to the nature of sin. We find ourselves still obeying the nature of sin simply because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But it's God designed that we would be free from the bondage of sin and walk in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved, when God saved you, we were baptized and we were brought into the family of God, whereas we become an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Amen. Why do we become a joint heir with Christ? Because we are part of him. We are baptized to the body of Christ. Amen. And being in the body of Christ, Christ is alive. Loved us so much until he left his home in glory and came down to this world to bring us the redemptive story that we may be redeemed back to God. Whereas God wanted us to live. Every born again believer have the privilege of living a better life when we come into the knowledge of accepting Christ and into the knowledge of knowing Him as our personal Savior. I know sometimes we find ourselves still at the point where we are still frustrated in this life. But God said, when we become sons and daughters of God, we are an heir to Him. 1 Corinthians 5 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things, come on, say all things, become new. Your life becomes really complete when you come into the knowledge of Christ. Until you come into the knowledge of Christ, your life is not really complete. Christ wants us to live a life that is pleasant, a life of joy, a life of peace. Christ wants to transform our lives to the, from that old sinful nature to a nature of godliness, of righteousness. Yet we find many born again believers, yet we are living in our lives in frustration. We're living confused. We're living incomplete. We're living 
depressed. We are living compressed. We are living suffering simply because of the tactics of Satan is constantly after us to destroy us and keep us from living the life that God intended for us to live. We are held under the bondage of where the Satan tend to work both day and night trying to turn us around. He influences our mind. He influences our soul. He gets into our spirit. He, he's there with us, walking with us, talking with us, trying to influence us. But I find out that the word of the Lord said, greater is he than he is you. Than he is in the world. But sometimes you just have to talk to the devil and tell the devil, I'm tired of you frustrating me. I'm tired of you trying to turn me around. I'm trying. Tired of the devil trying to destroy because it is God design. And I would not live a life of frustration, a life, a complete life, whereas I'm, I'm confused. But I know who I am and I know who I belong to. I'm a child of God. So therefore, sometimes we have to speak those things that are not as though they were. Tell the devil whose side we are on, not whose side we are leaning on. Because the devil will just leave. There's a possibility of him straightening you up. And turning you on the other side. But when you decide that I'm no longer leaning on the Lord's side, but I'm on the Lord's side. I need somebody to help me preach. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. He enforces our families, he get in our relationship, he enforces our jobs, he, he get into our friends, he get even into our livelihood. And you want a person to get upset, you start messing with their livelihood. Start messing with their finances. Jesus said that I came there, that, uh, that you may have life and that you may live. But on the other hand, Satan come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Come to steal everything that God promised to us. This morning we talked about the promises of God and how to pursue the promises of God. For every promise that God made to us, God is a God that is able to keep his promise. Amen. Satan come to steal your joy. He'll let you come to church, but he'll let you come and sit and run, not get into serving, not, not, not lift your heart to God. He'll come and depress you and let you find all kinds of fault that is going on in church. Oh, yes, he'll let you come to church. He'll let you come. He'll let you come. He calls you to be a busybody. Oh, he can talk to you in church like he never talked to you before. He can tell you some things in church. Everybody know what I'm talking about. Have you talked about the preacher? The preacher wife? Your fellow uh, sisters and brothers? Bring confusion everywhere. Hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. He'll steal your peace. To the point that you're frustrated, can't sleep at night, stand awake all, all night long. And then you come and analyze, and you know, wonder why did I stay awake? What is it that kept me awake? It's the devil that's trying to steal your peace, to steal your happiness, to destroy your happiness. So many marriages have been broken up because of the devil. I know I'm in the house now. And many times I found out it's not about big things, but it's about little things. And if you come to analyze it and try to find out why is it the devil, why is it that we are disturbed, why we can't get along, it is little things that are nagging things. Doesn't make any sense if you come to analyze it, if you come to look at it. But look like you just cannot get along no matter what you do. As long as the Lord is in the midst, he'll make everything all right. Satan will come and steal your trust in God. To the point to tell you that God really can't do what he said he'll do. You know, sometimes we're at the point in, in our lives in which we really don't believe. The way we go. We read it. We look at it. We go over it and over it. It is told to us time after time. But do we really trust 
גם 